All right, so it's 13 nothing at half, and then Saban decides, you know, he's got to pull the plug on Jalen and goes to Tua. It goes to his freshman uh, who, who played a little bit during the regular season. Um, clearly a, a kid who looks to throw downfield, much better passer. Um, what, what was your take on the decision to, to take Hurts out at that point? Um, you know, the, he had a whole hell of a lot more information than we did. Uh, like I said, I wasn't terribly surprised given how bad and how poorly he had played, Hurts had played, and, and the the option or the, the chance that there might be something wrong with him. Took and take him out, see how this other kid does. And, you know, from the jump, from that first scramble, mm-hmm. there was a monstrous difference. He was doing everything just at a, at a, at a better clip, at a higher rate. And, you know, you know, you knew the first couple throws he had when he was just off that they weren't going to hurt. You know, Brian Dayball wasn't not going to just give up throwing the ball down the field. And, you know, that, that, that proved to be what won them the game was that his, you know, his probably a low as low as whole uh, arm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, Buck sixty six threw the three touchdowns in the second half. Um, you know, one of the that one of the biggest plays in the second half, Randy, was when Tua threw the pick on their own. I don't know forty, and then yeah. From gives it right to seven. I mean, that was just a huge play because you figure it's twenty to seven. Maybe they drive down. Maybe they score a touchdown. But at worst, you know, they're in pretty good uh, field goal territory. If they just get a first down or two, and then it's twenty three seven. That could have changed the game. But that was a huge play. Yeah, it really was, and it was not a, you know, necessarily a fluke thing. That pressure causes problems, especially for for young quarterbacks. You know, like we saw them both take sacks that quarterbacks have no business taken at any point in, especially in a big game uh, much less overtime but you know when you get that pressure weird stuff happens and that ball just you know drills off the side of the one pass rusher's head and pops into the air and you know thank you very much it's right there and you've got a you know a, a turnover a real action play right after a momentum shifter that looked like if Georgia, you know, took proper advantage of it, you could take, I mean, real control of the game at that time. So getting back to the quarterback flip, um, what do you think goes through Saban's head, you know, Mm. down the road here a week, two weeks, a month, when he thinks about next year, Hurts is a sophomore, two is the true freshman. After that stage, after performing like that, you know, is there any way he can go back to Hurts next year? Do you think that happens? Well, it's, it's, not totally dissimilar. Georgia went through earlier with, you know, Jacob Eason, Fromm. You know, Fromm didn't exactly cover himself in accolades early. And Eason was going to get healthy, going to get available. They're going to have a decision. And the kid just kept doing everything in practice and, and stayed where he is. That's that's the thing about playing for Nick Saban. That's the thing about playing, I think, for the, the top programs. I don't care where you are, you know, if you're Ohio State or Oklahoma or Alabama or Georgia or Clemson, you build an incredibly competitive atmosphere. And when you can build that atmosphere and just that culture of competition, he doesn't have much of a decision to make because it's up to the, the individuals involved, you know. Tua is going to have to show up every single day and do basically what he did last night if he wants to keep that job because he's going to have a chance to keep to keep that job. And some people out there will think that's you know maybe that's unfair. That's just half of the game. But you know that's the nature of the beast. This was really close at the beginning of the year between these two guys, mm-hmm. and Hertz was was then clearly the starter. Well. We got a whole different we got a whole different thing now because if you're just going off this game, if if Hertz was not concussed, then you've got the other kid too is clearly the better quarterback. Yeah. Do you think Eason transfers? I think he does. Yeah. I think he does. Yeah, I just He's got to. He, he, well, uh, unless he's been screaming school through school. You remember he was an early enrollee. 
So if he's going to be, if he's on course to graduate in three years, you stay one more year, you, you, you see what happens, you get your degree from Georgia, and then you've got two years to go play somewhere else. That's the only, that's, you know, if you're giving a guy advice, that would be the, that would be, I think, the best advice and the best option for him. Not have to just sit and watch somewhere else for a year. If you can get your degree from there, and then, because you're not going to play anywhere next year, then go somewhere else for two years, that might be the best option. Joined by Randy Cross, CBS College Football Analyst. Saban with that national title win last night, now tied with Bear Bryant, six national titles. Do you see him getting to 10, like staying that long at hmm. Alabama? He's 66 at this point. Do you see him staying around where he could rack up nine or 10 uh, before he calls it quits? Kind of, he kind of looked like he was still having fun last night, didn't he? Yeah. He is in their face. He is on the sideline. Um, he's going to do this as long as he feels like doing it. 